WOCA. Ocala. minutes after 10 o'clock it's it's hard for me to promise anything and and uh and know for a fact that what i'm promising you is going to happen but i feel comfortable promising you that you will not want to leave your radio for the next 25 minutes because we have a lady on the phone who is probably the one of the bravest ladies we've had on the air we've had a lot of brave ladies brave people one of the most honest ladies um and my gosh you just want to um be her parent and give her a hug and say, my goodness, you are a, a really amazing lady. Aspen Martis, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. She's on the phone. She wrote a book called Girl in the Woods. It is her memoir. Uh, she wants to talk to us about sexual assault and the release of a new report that states that nearly one-fourth, one out of every four women in college have been sexually assaulted. What is it with our sense of respect for one another that we have lost. And I say that knowing full well that it's always been this way. I say that knowing full well that we, we come from a background of abusive people. I mean, they are everywhere. Yes. Not just now, but then as well. But still, you would think that eventually we would get to the point where we would understand that you have a right to your body, I have a right to mine, and the only time the two get together is when we both say yes. Yes. Um, good morning, Aspen. How are you? Good morning, Larry. Thank you so much for having me. Oh That's my goodness! Beautiful. You've got the sweetest voice, Aspen. Where Where are you right now? I'm in New York City at Harper Collins offices. Wow. Well, good for you. Good for you for getting a, a book published with Harper Collins. Isn't that awesome? Thank you. So was this a hard story to tell in writing? Yeah, it definitely was. And it, it took me two and a half years when I thought it was going to take me nine months. So. We, live, um, we live down the road from a college. The University of Florida is not that far from where you're talking right now. In fact, our signal reaches them just about, not quite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when, if I were a, uh, the father of a, uh, of a female student at the University of Florida, I would be worried for her all the time. It, w even if I never read this report, I, w I would be worried about her all the time. I just, I, just, I just know how us guys are. We're very predatory. Is that the word I'm looking for, Robin? Yes. But, but I would think that at least most of us, I hope, are uh, respectful enough to know to not act on that predatory thing wherever that comes from. But, so t can I ask you to tell your story? Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. It, to, it goes to 2008, right? So it's not that long ago. Mm -mm. So Yeah, in 2008, I was a new college freshman. Um, I just arrived at Colorado College, which is a small liberal arts school, about 2,000 kids um, in Colorado Springs. And I had grown up in suburban Massachusetts, so this was quite a departure. Um, and... Um, on my second night um, of my freshman year of college, um, before classes had begun and before before I'd removed um, my colorful construction paper name tag from my dorm room door, um, I invited um, a few other freshmen who I'd met during a fire drill um, to my room, which was a single, to watch The Breakfast Club. and. Um, when the movie ended, my neighbor, who was a boy, and um, a girl named Catherine, um, who I'd met at, at the fire drill, um, left, and a third boy, or a, a, a third person, a boy, um, stayed, and um, he and I had sort of been, we'd had, like, chemistry that night, like, we'd been flirting, and I was, I was happy that he stayed. Um, and I remember I was super awkward. I had no idea um, what to do. He was sitting on the bed, and I sat down on the no linoleum floor, 
at my new room, like, sat cross-legged on the floor because I had no idea. Like, I knew I definitely um, didn't want to have sex with him. I'd only had sex once before, but um, when I realized that, like, um, was, were, you, was were you nervous? Was there an instinctive part of you that knew this guy is up to no good? Did you know that in advance or, yeah, or not at all? Actually, which really later disturbed me. I was like, I must have terrible judgment. How could I have trusted a rapist? Was what I thought. Um, wow. I thought just like, it just, it, I didn't think that that was like a possibility. Um, it's, not- it's kind of like what you said, like the number that, the statistic that one in four women in college now will be sexually assaulted while they're at school, that blows my mind still. I, yeah, yeah. Well, and and I, I don't want you to des- describe everything that happened to you unless you feel there's a need to for us to understand your story. But w- after that all happened, um, can I ask what happened? Did he did, did he go to jail? Hopefully, I mean, did did the police come and get him and and put an end to this nonsense? Oh, but, oh my God! Right, I wish. Um, you wish. Yeah. No. So. Um, Instead, I went to the school's um, rape response coordinator, <laughs> and I remember at the time it, it totally blew my mind that that would even be a job that you yeah. would need. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. I, I never would have realized that. Right? But at a school of 2,000 kids, that that would be a full-time job that was necessary. But, of course, now we know that it totally is necessary, which is even more disturbing. So what is their role? Is their role to console you? Is their role to um, make sure the law does its job and and arrests somebody like that? So here's where we enter, like, the the confusing web of the kangaroo court system that is, you know, specific to this school, and I know every school has its own dysfunctional version. Um, And what I didn't know when I was 18 was that there is an inherent conflict of interest, you know, because colleges have brands and they put a lot of money into the creation and protection of their brand. And the last thing that a college wants is a, a rape conviction on their campus. Hmm. So it's in their best interest, I guess, to obscure the truth and to obstruct justice, not to... Um, to find out what really happened and to protect... So he got away with it? So, yeah, so they they found him. I went through the, uh, the college's mediation process. They treated a rape like... Uh, as if, like, rape could be mediated, like a playground fight. Like, I testified, and he Wow. Testified. That's a great choice of words, by the way. Mm. So did your father or any other male figure in your family who um, could have got angry? <laughs> I mean, did anybody do, do anything that was maybe, I don't know, outside the law? Or did um, anybody want to anyway? I mean, my brother, he offered to beat the boy up for me. Yeah, that, that's like, a good, no. good brother. That's yeah. a good brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I appreciate, I appreciated that. Like, it did make me feel like he was on my team. But honestly, like, no one else, no one can cor- correct a rape. And I guess that's, like, the devastating thing. Like, there's the only thing you can do in the aftermath of a trauma is face that trauma. You can't deny it. You can't carry on like it never happened, which is what I tried to do for some you tried months to do. staying at school. You know. Can I ask you a question? And this is something I don't understand, but I'm guessing all women do. I don't understand why after a rape you you are ashamed. It doesn't make to, any sense to me, but I under, But I hear this all the time. Yeah, and I'll do my best to explain it, though I think it's probably... Um, dependent on each you know each person but for me this is why I was ashamed and I felt tremendous shame more than anything I felt ashamed um so there's a detail um 
of my behavior in the aftermath of the rape that I would omit when I was telling the story. And I would omit it and I would omit it. And it's that after it happened, I asked him if he would sleep over. Um, I actually begged him to sleep over. And he told me I was effing crazy. And he didn't. He, he left. And then I thought, I must be crazy because who asks? the boy who has just raped them to sleep over. I thought like, how could I have trusted a rapist, first of all, but how could I possibly want him to stay? Like, there, what's wrong with me? Like, what is wrong with me? Um, and what I didn't know then, and, um, and what I'm so glad um, I've discovered um, when I finally did publish my story and, and tell it publicly, um, which I first did in, in the New York Times Modern Love column, um, it sort of went viral. I think like 11 million people read it. And um, I included this detail. I included that I'd asked him to stay. Mm -hmm. And I braced myself. I expected to hear from just hundreds of people who would tell me, you know, if you asked him to sleep over, then how could that be rape? Um, but I didn't. Instead, I heard from hundreds of people, mostly women, who told me, oh, my God, I also asked the boy who raped me to sleep over. And then I heard from some women who told me I wrote him a love song or I wanted to tutor him in chemistry or I just I wrote oh, a love poem I heard so many times. And I realized that it was actually the most common reaction. Wow. Because you're trying to just carry on. You're like, you're trying to, you're like, well, if I just act like nothing happened and he's nice to me after, maybe if he's nice to me the next day, well, I'm physically intact, so maybe I'll just be fine. Wow. Well, you are so brave, so honest. Aspen Martis is our guest. Her book is called uh, Girl in the Woods. It's her memoir. There's a part of the story I want to talk about after the break. Um, you took a long walk, didn't you? It was quite a long walk. The audience doesn't know why we're laughing. Let's, let me take that break, and we'll be right back to find out about that long walk. Uh, I, I promised you would not want to turn your radio or to go mm -hmm. anywhere else. I, I'm no. keeping my promise. Well, Aspen is keeping that promise for us. We will be right back, I promise. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Clouds and breaks of sun warm, but you move with a couple of showers and a heavy thunderstorm or two. Watch for flooding downpours, the high 84 to 88. Partly to mostly cloudy tonight with a shower or thunderstorm in the area near the coast early on, below 72 to 76. Tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, the high 86 to 90. Thursday, mostly cloudy with a shower or thunderstorm, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. All right, 19 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Aspen Martis is on the phone. Uh, her book is called uh, Girl in the Woods. It's her memoir. You are such a good writer, Aspen, and you've been such a, a great, eloquent speaker on this show. You've got the sweetest voice I think I've heard in a long time and such a serious, serious subject you've, you've touched on. And so it couldn't be any more personal than this. So thank you for being on the air with us. And, and how's the book doing? When did the book come out? So it came out um, on September 8th, and it just hit the Canadian bestseller list. So the Canadians are picking up on it first. Hmm, that's interesting, huh? Well, it's cold up there. They've got nothing to do but read books. So. I know, right? Oh, I'm teasing. Oh, where's Robin? Damn, sorry. <laughs> All right, so uh, connect what we talked about in the first part with this walk you took, and tell us about the walk. Okay, so after... I had reported the rape. They found the boy to be innocent, um, which meant that I was guilty of lying. Um, and they allowed him to remain on campus wow. with me. 
And then <laughs> they moved him into my dormitory. They oh. moved him from the dorm across campus, the other large freshman dorm, into my dorm. Um, and <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's just insane that for them crazy. to do that. That is crazy. Didn't anybody believe you at all? Um, I don't know what they really believed, but... So you, it sounds like to me they, they found him innocent because it was in the best interests of the school and had nothing to do with really uh, doing the right thing. Okay, like things that were read back to me, um, I, and it's all behind closed curtains, so you never know why they've decided anything. It's not like a real, like, there's no, it's just silly. Like, so the whole system is designed to obscure the truth because it's not in the best interest of schools to have it come out that there's been. Well, you a needed a guidance on this, and uh, the, the guidance that you had wasn't anything, and now you have prepared this wonderful memoir to give guidance to others through your opening up about it in your uh, newspaper story and in your book. Thank you. So you walked 2,650 <laughs> miles, according to my notes. <laughs> yes. Two yes, that's it. So I left. I was just like, you know what? My school can't help me, apparently. And my belief in this infrastructure that I've been told to believe in all my life was just shaken. And and where did you go? I, so I, I did what any girl would do. I, I flew to the Mexican border. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican border. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, um, so I flew to L.A. and my dad, he took a vacation from work and he met me there. And he drove me down to the southern terminus of a path that to me seems like infinite, um, the Pacific Crest Trail, which just, it's 2,650 miles long, as you said, and it runs through the Mojave Desert and then the High Sierra Mountains, which are snowy and vast and remote, and then through the volcano lands of northern... Um, California and Southern Oregon, and then into the Cascades. And you walked the whole thing? I walked the whole thing. How long did that take you? It took five and a half months. Did you walk alone? So I started alone, um, and I had done a lot of research about it. So it's called the Pacific Crest Trail, and it's sort of like the West Coast version of the Appalachian Trail, which is sort of a little more famous. So there are these people called through hikers who attempt to walk the whole trail in one continuous journey each year and they all start in the spring and finish in the fall before they get snowed out and it's like this migrating pack of like you know what I didn't realize then was mostly men but of like pilgrims who are kind of seeking something like no one drops out of their life and decides to be homeless for five and a half months and sleep in a tent if they're super happy with their, their life in the real world. But you yeah, know? I would see, I would, gosh, I, yeah, I have to, I'm sure everybody's wondering the same thing. Weren't you afraid, having had a rape experience, especially out in the woods like this, that something else was going to happen? I mean, with these guys, you said packs of men. <laughs> just, yeah. just calling us a pack of men. I love that. <laughs> We do travel in packs, by the way. Yes, you do. I, know. So, I, I mean, so I mean, but but the, uh, if I was your father, I would have had uh, you know the Secret Service or something tra trailing you or something. Yes. Oh my gosh, my dad was so worried, and I have to give him so much credit for being so supportive because I'm sure that's not how he wanted to spend his vacation, dropping his daughter off just north of Tijuana with a, a little backpack and some water bottles. Um, but yeah, you walked the whole thing, wow. <laughs> but but there wasn't anybody to help you through this emotionally. The um, uh, rape coordinator at the school wouldn't help you. Uh, your friends might have seen more distance to you. Your family didn't really know what to do, and uh, the police couldn't step forward. So you had to try to handle it yourself. And for you, this was the best way possible, it seems. Yeah, to me, like, and... At the time, I thought, oh, like, I'll be returning to the best memories of my childhood, to camping with my family and backpacking and, you know, like, picking berries and just having fun and, like, the innocence. 
and that you have wonderful photos in your book that reflect that time of your childhood yeah. too. I just it just is oh, <laughs> such a moving book. I'm so embarrassed by those photos. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness! Don't be embarrassed. No. You know why? Because we see ourselves. We are. We see ourselves or somebody we love. It's a true reflection of the reader. The, the uh, into your head. Okay, so the, the walk. The, the book, uh, first of all, for the listeners, we're never going to get the whole story in this because it's no. just too, it's a very complex story. I, I think I'm appalled at the incompetence of the people who could have helped you, first yeah, of all, at the school. school. I am appalled at them. I hope they're reading your book and I hope they are ashamed and I hope the they change their mind. And I hope every school is listening. Mm -hmm. I hope every counselor is listening. You, you, you penalize these guys. You don't let them get off. You don't make the girl feel like somehow she's at fault. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? So, so um, Aspen, I'm sorry. I got mad there. <laughs> but, but, you, no, they can do better. They, they could do be way better. Absolutely. Okay, so, and, and I, I think you, writing the book, there's no way uh, that anybody could read this book and not see it the way no. Aspen has told it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I mean, you are as genuine as could be. Who is Who is Dash? Okay, so Dash is another hiker. He was another through hiker who had also decided that he was going to leave his life in the real world for entirely different reasons. And what you kind of discover is that everyone out there is out there for a reason. We we all had had reasons. And I met him in Bend, Oregon, um, after nearly 2,000 miles of walking. So. It turned out that he had started off at the Mexican border just two days after I had. And for um, three months, I guess, about three months, we'd been within a day's walk of each other, or about a day's walk, wow. um, kind of fluctuating, trekking north in near-perfect sync. And in Bend, Oregon, we finally met. And I thought he was super cute, and he thought I was super interesting. And we, <laughs> we decided that we liked each other and we were going to try to finish the walk together. Um, it's funny how she says he was cute and she was interesting. Yes. I, I guarantee if he's on the phone, he's going to say, no, she was hot. <laughs> yeah. She, she was hot. So, but, so were you able to tell him the reason you were walking or did it take a while after you finished the trek? It did take a while. Um, I told him... It, yeah, that was a, a really, really big moment. Um, I told him in the woods in northern Washington state, um, and I just remember uh, that he reacted the way I wished every single person I had told before him had reacted, which was just only to, like, open his arms and then hold me. It's a good man. Mm. Are you now Mrs. Dash? Um, we actually broke up. <laughs> oh. We broke up. Oh, you yeah. broke up. Okay, I thought you were married for some reason. We did. No, we we got married. Um, and we were married for three years, and he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And I feel just so much gratitude for everything that he gave me. But um, he returned to the woods. He moved back to Colorado oh. and decided he wanted to live not in New York City, but to, you know, through hike in the summers and live somewhere. Uh, Aspen, you, you have delivered what I promised, a, a radio interview that nobody tuned out from. So thank you for being on the air with us. Thank you for being honest and brave. And you are hopefully... Sharing your st by sharing your story, hopefully you are allowing a lot of other women to come forward get, and, and shed that shame. Don't be ashamed of this. This is some idiot's p problem. It's not yours. I mean, it's your problem, but it's not your fault. Yeah, and but the it's schools. Not your shame. It's a shame on him. It's misplaced shame you're feeling. Absolutely. And then the school. The school needs shame to be ashamed as well. I have a copy up. of this beautifully written book, Girl in the Woods. By the way, one of my favorite people, Ben Folds, gives it a thumbs up. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love Ben Folds. Yeah. Uh, he has a new album out as well. Call me if you want the copy that was sent to us, Girl in the Woods. Uh, the rest of us have to go buy it. Um, is it in the bookstores and online? I'm guessing it is. It is, yeah. Just look up Aspen Martis, M-A-R-T-I-S, Girl in the Woods, and you will find it. Aspen, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Thank you so much for having me. This was wonderful. You're a strong lady. Keep keep it up. Thank mm -hmm. you. We'll be right back. Yeah.
Radio. On Lily Mu, the outgoing House Speaker has given his endorsement. Now, a California lawmaker is trying to line up the votes. Vowing he would change the culture of Washington if elected.